I ever get too uh, soft so you can't hear me, let me know. Okay. Um, my name is Mike Kachanik. I run sales <coughs> for CypherCloud. Um, been with the company since its founding 30 months ago. Uh, we're now a, a fairly well-known uh, early stage firm. As you can tell by the name, it's focused on cloud data protection. It's all about encrypting and or tokenizing your data before it leaves your enterprise as it gets stored into popular cloud service, public cloud services like Salesforce or Amazon. Google Mail, Microsoft Office 365, and Box, right? Um, the problem we focused on was essentially the number one problem in adopting clouds, right? Worrying about data, how to protect that data, and also worrying about regulations associated with, with, uh, with data in general. So we often find ourselves in between kind of the IT side of the house, whose uh, job is to protect data, right? Uh, to uphold uh, all the fiduciary responsibilities associated with customer data, and the business side of the house that wants to adopt new and cool innovative technologies often coming to market as cloud services, right? So in between this kind of Mexican standoff, we can insert ourselves <coughs> and we basically give a compromise. We allow our customers to selectively encrypt and or tokenize data that is intended, the endpoint targeted to be a cloud service. If you take any uh, type of survey you like, it's always picked as the number one issue in the market. And from a complexity perspective, when you look at global financial markets, you're dealing with kind of personally identifiable uh, privacy law that you know, has, a, has a mapping that something, looks something like this, constantly changing. But if you're in Singapore, you know the rules associated with exporting data out of Singapore. If you're in Switzerland, you know those rules. And we basically can come into these environments and give organizations an ability to protect that privacy and data uh, in these local jurisdictions and still yet use uh, services like Salesforce with the economic value associated with uh, adopting all these cloud services. Um, as a company today, 30 months later, um, you know, I was employee number two. I'm very proud to be part of an organization that now has over a million users on the planet protecting well over 100 million records of Salesforce data, supporting the five largest clouds on the, uh, uh, out in the market today, and widely recognized as a leader in the space and a founder in the space, right? Um, we have just recently received our venture capital funding from Andreessen Horowitz to the tune of $30 million, and we're now taking our company to the next stage. What we do, and I'll get into a demo and show this, is we provide a piece of software. That software is shipped typically as a virtual appliance, okay? It's a stack of software that you install behind your firewall or in some DMZ that you control. The key point here is you're in control of the keys on the appliance. They sit behind your firewall or in some network that you have control over. We use AES-256 encryption that's FIPS certified, right? The appliance itself is FIPS 140-2 compliant for the information and security folks in the room. We operate as a reverse proxy. So to the end user experience, there's no change. You're simply going to a slightly different <coughs> URL. Most of our customers have a vanity URL. So if you're from Morgan Stanley using your, our product, you'd have morganstanley.salesforce.com. And at that point, you would transition out through our gateway to the endpoint of Salesforce. We would do our job as encrypting the data in a bi-directional fashion, both get <coughs> posts from the endpoint service. We selectively encrypt data. Uh, our customers pick the most sensitive data and apply different kinds of rules to different kinds of data. Social security numbers, account numbers have a different classification of data security than does a street address, right? We can preserve all the functionality of an application like searching and sorting, but yet the data is still encrypted. That's because we see all of the web traffic transitioning through the appliance. The actual technology itself is expandable. Right? So what we have built is a platform. That platform is extensible from an open framework perspective. And that's how, within 30 months, we've built interfaces to the five most largest clouds on the planet. We've also extended it in the area of functionality associated with malware detection, data loss, data leak prevention, and user audit. We see every read and write in the cloud, so we can tell you exactly who has seen a piece of data in a cloud service. We can report that to Splunk and do all kinds of interesting reporting capabilities letting an organization know exactly how much confidential information has actually uh, you know, uh, gone outside of its enterprise. Uh, whether it's Salesforce.com or Microsoft Office 365, these images are the going through the gateway versus the encrypted image, or Box.net, the technology operates the same. You simply use the cloud service that you've always been using, going through the gateway, no performance degrade, no functionality loss. right? Um, so 
Some of our customers' examples, a top three U.S. bank is using us to basically process every mortgage in the United States. They're using a Salesforce portal as a loan origination portal. JoQ Public uploads his 1040 form, uploads his payroll stub, tells the bank where he's lived for the last 10 years of his life, tells the bank what his mother's maiden name is, and submits his loan application. That is processed by about 20,000 internal loan officers at this bank. That is a Salesforce portal. That is basically something that would not have been able to be completed as a traditional kind of roll your own, on-premise, Siebel built type scenario, right? Semiconductor provider operating out of Singapore needs to protect cir uh, circuitry. We encrypt that data. It's a repository of semiconductor data, right? Basically designed, circuit designs. Top Australian bank operating with one of the more egregious privacy laws in the world out of Australia, right? Is using us to protect all of their chatter feeds and, and various operational uh, aspects of their business in different world markets. Okay, so I'll transition to the demo now. <coughs> And what I have for you is basically a demonstration um, logging in through Salesforce. So from my browser here, you'll notice the URL says dash salesforce-com cyphercloud.net. So from this endpoint here in my terminal, I'm transitioning up to a cyphercloud gateway, which is installed as an AMI up in the Amazon AWS web service. At that point, SSL is being terminated. I'm inspecting the web traffic as it transitions my gateway and I'm applying a set of rules which I'll show you how to configure, okay? This is just a stock Salesforce screen. It's GE Aviation. We can do something like go to Chatter. Chatter is a very popular uh, collaboration platform within, within the Salesforce architecture. One of the things that information security architects worry about is the fact that it's a free form text entry box, right? I can type anything I like into this box, including sensitive data. Let's let that load. Yes, okay. So here I am in Chatter. Chatter allows you to type whatever kind of post you like. So uh, here's a post. Uh, Pete, uh, please tell John Grazioli to open me up a new wealth management account. My account number is blah, blah, blah. My routing number is blah, blah, blah. And my social security number is blah. I share that out to the world. Maybe 32,000 people monitoring this Chatter post, and there it is. Now, if I were to go to salesforce.com, so this is transitioned through my gateway up in Amazon Cloud, and I've applied an AES-256 encryption algorithm to this statement. If I go out to salesforce.com and take a look at what that really looks like, I'll just refresh the page here, you're gonna see a bunch of unicoded characters. This is AES-256 encryption, and that post will show up here in the list, and this is what it looks like. So if I'm at salesforce.com, and I'm a malicious insider looking at a piece of data, I will see this. If I'm the United States Department of Justice and I issue a subpoena to salesforce.com to turn over the chatter archive of Morgan Stanley, I will see this. A second subpoena would have to be issued right, for the encryption key. That's a big issue in our market, right? Um, if someone were to hack into salesforce.com through an API, one of the 5,000 app exchange APIs out there, they would basically have this. Strongly encrypted, military grade encryption, which basically takes 50 years you know, 50 supercomputers, something like 3,000 years to basically exhaust the key space, right? So that's what we're dealing with, right? Now, whether it applies to uh, any of the objects that you see here, we can click into accounts, and what you're, what you're going to end up seeing is basically um, just essentially gibberish, right? I see none of the accounts. If I'm actually an authenticated user, of course, the experience is, is unaltered. I click into accounts. I see all my account data, and I still can search. I can type in GE and find GE Aviation. Over here, in this other browser, GE Aviation will not be found because GE Aviation doesn't exist in this database. Okay? It's been essentially uh, anonymized with AES-256 encryption. Now, this is encryption, but it's not rocket science. Okay? So uh, when, we, when we set up our environment, we've actually made it a very straightforward scenario for users to deal with. Our users come in, we preload the, uh, the application with all of the uh, schema data associated with the Salesforce implementation of this, of this implementation. That populates on the screen, and users are allowed to decide you know, what to protect in their database, okay? Because not every piece of data is, is equivalent uh, data. So this screen populates, and what we could do is account name, we can do nothing to it. So we have a whole range of what we can do to this data. We can make it searchable, we can make it not searchable. We can search prefix only. Um, 
your, your decision. With each of these decisions, it's a certain level of security. That's basically the way it works, right? At the end of the day, you end up managing a set of servers behind your firewall, load balanced, and now you can access Box, you can access Gmail, Exchange, Salesforce, any number of uh, cloud applications, including the fact that we are a framework and people are applying our technology to legacy applications like Java apps that they're putting up in the cloud. Many new SaaS vendors call us up all the time saying, how can I work with your company to add encryption to our new SaaS technology that we want to launch in the market, right? So uh, with that, I'll basically end uh, the demonstration. Hopefully that was clear and turn it over for some questions and answers. So I have a question just, just to be clear. If you have a, kind of a highly encrypted data field, Presumably you can't search, you can't ask the system to search for that because you have to unencrypt every copy. Is that, is that right or do you correct, construct search indices that are separate? How do yeah, you so what, what happens is this. Um, every transaction flows through the gateway. So when I come up into this search field and type in GE, what's going to happen is I'm going to create a new piece of data that's going to get sent through the appliance. It's a new URL and basically what's happening is that we will find various pieces of data. What we do is we actually rewrite the URL, right? We end up looking for GE, like my name's Mike. Instead of looking for Mike in the database, because I know it's not going to be there, I'll look for blah, because Mike encrypted turns out to be blah. So you look for the encrypted version. That's of right. Okay. I leverage Salesforce's own search capability oh, okay. to find all the encrypted data. Oh, okay. And as it transitions back through the appliance, I turn it back into clear text right before it's displayed. Oh, okay. We encrypt as close to the point of origin as possible basically the browser. So because it's consistently encrypted, the word, the right. phrase Right, but it's not, it's not as trivial as that. So we can encrypt, like if we encrypted the same way every single time, an information security architect would say, well, that could be subject to frequency right. analysis attack. Right. And it's not just the word blah. There's a lot of padding that goes around that word blah. There's a lot of chaffing that goes into it. We use multiple different seed vectors on the algorithms. But as long as it's a finite number of seed algorithm, seeds salting in the algorithm, we can find the data. And you can always choose not to find the data. Turn search off and have a random initiated uh, piece of uh, algorithm, <coughs> which will guarantee you'll never find it again twice. With data, well, it seems like there, are, there is certain data that you cannot encrypt, right, in order to uh, not break the application well, the algorithms, like, I would assume, numbers that are used for calculation. You don't want to encrypt them. So there's two, there's, there's actually three points of view on that question, right? Um, one is, uh, anonymize the record to the point where the number doesn't matter, right? If I, if I encrypt every other piece of information on a record, other than the account balance, I simply have a number. If I encrypt every piece of information associated with someone's positional data, I have a set of positions on the page. I may not know much more than that. So that's one level of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is, okay, if you really need to encrypt it, and do downstream processing on the server side, well, provide a function to call back to the gateway. So we have an API. Like S Salesforce is a fairly complicated app. It has a whole web service API where you can program on the server side called Apex. We can call back to the gateway and unencrypt the data and do the business logic. That's another thing. If it really is something that's hard to encrypt, like a two-digit field, right? It's hard to take a two-digit field and turn it into a 30-character long string. We need to preserve format, right? Like an email address needs to be encrypted, blah, blah, at blah, dot, blah, right? It needs to be less than 80 characters, otherwise Salesforce will throw an exception. And AES-256 expansion will make that fairly large, right? We need to handle all of that use case. So in certain events, we can also tokenize data. It's not a preferable way. It's not the more modern way. It's not the more industry standard way. But we can have a tokenization database of just you know, a credit card number and some token and send a token to the field and keep the credit card number local. So there's lots of ways to address your point, but you're, you're absolutely correct in that, you know, you need to be cognizant of what you're doing. And we have built essentially a toolbox here that allows you to work through most of those problems. Time for one more. One more question. Do you, do you depend, since you're a proxy, are you extracting the text from the template and do you depend on understanding the Salesforce page and if they change the design, you have to re-implement, or no. are you? No, we're free flow with regard to everything associated with graphics, all the style sheets, anything they want to do. In fact, we're actually only looking for the field data. So if you've told me DOM ID 
X. But equal. You're exa if they change the DOM on you, you have to recode. Yeah, so all their standard fields are pretty standard. And to actually re-implement a new DOM ID, because there are custom fields in Salesforce, right? You could generate your own custom field, own DOM ID. It's a trivial process. But yes, if they do change the DOM ID of a standard field, which they haven't done in yeah, 10 years. They should. And they should, because a lot of things will break. Um, you know, we would need to address that. Okay, well, hopefully that was useful.